Welcome compadres. Now we're going to go into an application, an Excel application of ultimate load faster analysis. So this is the spreadsheet. You have your inputs. So you're going to pull your shear force component from FEA, both of them, and then your axial force component. You're going to put them in here and then you're going to have to define a tensile allowable, shear allowable, and bending moment allowable for the fastener you're analyzing. A lot of times you'll get the tensile allowable and the shear allowable but you won't get the bending moment allowable. Well there's ways you can estimate that as shown here I put in a number four fastener and I went ahead put in the inputs and it gives me outputs like bending moment allowable and also tensile ultimate tensile allowable ultimate shear allowable so once you have that figured out you can put them in here and then you're gonna have to apply things like a temperature knockdown factor in this case I'm using 0.96 there's also factors of safety involved we also use a fitting factor if we don't have really data on the joint so you're gonna apply this in almost every situation apply a fitting factor and then I have the thickness over which the distributed load is acting so if we go over here we can see that thickness is really over which this distributed load acts it's usually the thickness of the members and so um, I define it as T1 and T2 and then you may have a gap you have to add in between there in this case I'm using basically 0 0.03 and then I have defined a screw head diameter which essentially is just the diameter of the screw head right here and then the location of the force the reaction force so Q so over here uh, Q is acting some distance from the center line that's really what that that's defining is um, defining the percentage over which it spans so uh, the d distance between these two values is going to be uh, 67% of the head in this case. I can increase that number, uh, decrease it. 67% uh, is a good starting point, um, a valid assumption. So then I go into my calculations. First, I want to calculate my shear load ratio. So I'm going to have to calculate my equivalent shear load using this equation. So it's going to just take those two shear components and use Pythagorean theorem to calculate an equivalent shear load and then I calculate my shear load ratio so I take my fitting factor and my safety factor I multiply it by the load acting on my fastener the shear load 67 in this case and then I divide it by my temperature knockdown multiplied by my ultimate shear load or shear, ultimate shear allowable in units of pounds so I've defined that and then I go into bending so I calculate my moment my max moment using the geometry of the fasteners we discussed in the previous presentation so we determined our max moment based on the geometry to be 8.3 pounds inches in this case and then I calculate a, a bending load ratio once again apply the fitting factor the safety factor and then multiply it by my load and then divide it by my bending moment ultimate allowable multiplied by my temperature factor so it's just this equation to the left and then I determine my reaction force Q once I know the moment and then I'm dividing it by the eccentric distance or the distance to the center line right the center line of this shank and then um, I get a value that's my Q my reaction force once I have that then I can determine my tension load ratio take the fitting factor multiply it by the factor safety and then I add in my tensile load that I pull out of FEA which is what I defined up here my axial force and then I go ahead and add my Q to that and divide it by the tensile ultimate multiply by the temperature knockdown factor once I had those values I have all my load ratios I can then put them here in this cell I add my tensile load ratio to my bending load ratio and then I plot it as this point 
on my interaction curve and then I have also added some different curves and these are the margins of safety for the linear and then the uh, squared version and then the uh, the cube version so those are the different ones I plot them all on here because I don't always know which one applies to each fastener so it's good to just calculate a margin of safety for them uh, for all of them and so I use this equation to calculate my margin of safety for each and you can see that uh, for the linear one I'm closest to that my margin of safety is the smallest which makes sense and then uh, so that's how the spreadsheet was built and this is what I apply when I go do an ultimate load analysis. In addition, I'll go into the FEA model and pull out some loads and show how this applies to, you know, acceleration loading, vibe loading, the different loading scenarios so that you can get a feel on how a aerospace engineer works. Uh, these types of uh, integrations analysis with FEA because we know FEA is complicated uh, you can make it real complicated a lot of times we want to keep it simple and uh, this is a simple way to analyze the ultimate fastener condition um, using post-processing in Excel rather than just modeling the fasteners in the FEA program so I hope you enjoyed the video and I'll see you next time adios